Kalido. The hometown of Dragons, a Warhammer player who insulted the Donkey Prince came here and became the Kalido Prince Imrik. The Cowhide Book Club, which can travel the world, is one of the few things he can rely on. Can the power and knowledge of Diablo, the soul of darkness, and the mask of the betrayer revive Kalido once again? In the 136th year of Fenuba's coronation, in the 2399th year of the Imperial Calendar, the Battle of Fenua Plains and the Great Holy War are about to begin. The shadows from Nagaland and the darkness of the Northern Chaos Tribe are gradually enveloping the sky over Ojuan. This time, the Dragon Prince will make different choices and let the Kalido Fire Dragon Flag soar in the sky. Also known as, The Rise of Zhongu Long Outian, Keywords of the Novel. Warhammer. Return of the Dragon Without a Pop.Up Window, Warhammer. Return of the Dragon TXT Complete Collection Download, Warhammer. Return of the Dragon Latest Chapter Reading. Chapter 1. The Prince of Kalido You Are Listening at Novel Full.Audio. Chapter 1 The Prince of Kalido More than 80 meters of white marble stands around the magnificent palace, and the height of the dome requires the naked eye to look up to see the murals meticulously drawn by artists at the top. For giant dragon sculptures made in real proportions are placed in the four corners of the palace. This palace seems to have been designed for giants, and ordinary people who stay here only feel their insignificance when compared to the huge buildings. In a sense, it is also true that this palace was built for those magnificent ancient creatures. This is the hometown of dragons, the Dragon Palace on the Ojuan Dragon Ridge Mountains. Inside the palace, compared to the Grand Palace, some exquisite thrones are placed in the rear. The thrones mimic the sharp claws of dragons, with sharp claws extending upwards. A elf with beautiful golden hair and a handsome face sits on top of it, propping his chin with his hands and looking at the empty palace. Wang Boming, or rather the future dragon lord Imrik, is sitting on his throne, contemplating his transformation into a highly skilled dragon. I mean, Kalido is just a bunch of trash. There's nothing to see except for dragons. How did he get me here? Imrik sighed helplessly as he continued to watch the empty palace. It had been five days since he had traveled here, and at the beginning, he was undoubtedly extremely scared. After all, everyone knew that joke. When Warhammer players knew they were going to travel to Warhammer, they would probably cry like fart spirits stepped on their toes, but now they have gradually adapted. Thinking of the scene that had just crossed over, Imrik felt very speechless. As a stunned young man, he learned that a group of dark elf assassins wanted to kill the sleeping Ojuan's strongest dragon, Menasnir. He quickly took a group of attendants to rescue him, and all the attendants died in battle. Imrik was also injured by a poisoned arrow. Just as he thought he was going to meet his ancestors in the whirlpool, Menasnir was awakened by the noise outside the cave, he saved the dying Imrik. Wang Boming, who recalled this incident from his memory, only wanted to say why he didn't go to the Empire to buy some gunpowder and wake up all the sleeping dragons. If Minas Neil woke up a little later, Imrik would definitely die there. Well, he's actually dead, and now he's a magpie's nest. Continuing to sigh, there was a saying that came, but it was called. We couldn't just curse and cross again. Although crossing to Warhammer is one of the worst crossing points, the identity of the person who crossed is basically the best starting point. If it were other legendary lords who have crossed into high precision, they would not be much better than Imrik. Tyrion has the Cain curse on his body, the Shadow King has a deep hatred towards the Witch King, while Iris, ruled by Isarion, is a desolate land. Tigris is also Lilith's licking dog. As for the Eternal Queen, if she crossed over to her, she might be directly captured by lust. Fortunately, I still have some trump cards in my hands to face the rapid changes in the world situation in the future. Even if the Dragon Prince's army is mediocre in the game, even if it is riding a donkey, it is still a highly skilled and brave elf with cutting.edge combat power. The Dragon Army is an important guarantee for Kalido to maintain a superior position in Ojuan. Even if Imrik has no more than 20 dragon army, it can still determine the direction of a war. 
Moreover, he also had a golden finger of a passerby in his hand. Although he suspected that this was a scheme of some blue old bird, after all, a passerby brought variables, which was definitely the greatest pleasure for that troublemaker. However, Imrik could only hope that the unreliable Asuyan would bless the descendants of Kalido. Standing up and walking out of the court, it was now the 136th year of Fenuba's coronation of the Phoenix King. Due to the eerie chronology of the higher elves, which recalculated the coronation time of each phoenix king, Imrik specifically went to scholars to inquire about the current imperial calendar year. Now is the year 2299 in the imperial calendar, 203 years before the last emperor Karl Franz ascends the throne, and there is still plenty of time to prepare for his end. However, there are also many major events happening now. The eternal elector Isawa Kaur will lead the Chaos Army south to Kisrif in two years, and Kisrif, who has been defeated by the coalition led by the devout Magnus, will defeat this eternal elector. Leaving aside the problems of the old world, Ojuan is also constantly in danger. The Battle of the Fenuer Plains will begin in three years, and Imrik needs to protect the sleeping dragon while also trying to strengthen the influence of Kalido in Ojuan to face future challenges. Due to the protection of Asuyan, the higher elves not only had a keen sense but also had an extremely fast speed. The spacious palace only took a little time to leave, and Imrik needed to inspect the training of the Dragon Prince. Anyway, the Dragon Prince, the Dragon Prince, and the Val Anvil were the foundation of Kalido's kingdom. As soon as she walked out of the palace, two women, Asur, dressed in yellow and white maidservants, approached Imrik and asked if he needed to change his armor. In the past, Imrik liked to fight around whenever he had nothing to do. Thanks to the pure bloodline of the dragon tamer and the blessings of the giant dragon, he could always achieve victory, which also gave the already proud prince of Kalido great satisfaction. In external affairs, he often looked at people through his nostrils, if you are not convinced, then hit until you are convinced. Waving their hands, they continued to handle other matters. There were not many maids in the Dragon Palace, so their task was heavy. The only remaining member of the Dragon Tamer family is Imrik, so there are very few court personnel. Coupled with the atmosphere of military tradition, compared to the exquisite sculptures and murals that can be seen everywhere in the palaces of other kingdoms in Ojuan, there are more weapons, armor, and loot seized from enemies, which require careful maintenance by people. Turning around, we arrived at the training ground next to the Dragon Palace and saw two dragon princes wearing fiery red dragon armor made of Izarama silver riding pure blood elf warhorses, holding training cavalry guns and kite-shaped shields in a competition. The pure blood elf warhorse is one of the best mounts in the world, with unparalleled speed and reliable patience, making it an important guarantee for the Aza knights to be renowned worldwide. After thousands of years of superior breeding, the warhorse of Kalido has adapted to the efficient and deadly combat style of the dragon princes. Two dragon princes were charged at high speed by their warhorses, and the training cavalry guns with two wooden spearheads were instantly intertwined. One person, due to a slightly slower reaction, was hit by the cavalry gun. The fragile structure of the wooden cavalry gun broke from the middle due to force, but the person who was hit also fell directly from the horse and fell to the ground. Seeing this efficient and deadly attack method, Imrik couldn't help but applaud beside him. Regardless of how to deny it, the dragon prince, who rode a warhorse, although not as well dot known in the Ojuan family as the silver-helmeted knight or the Arian knight due to his sparse number, is more famous for his innate arrogance. However, years of training in Brave will still make them one of the two sharp blades of Kalido. The few people standing next to Imrik heard applause and with Osir's keen senses, he had just noticed someone approaching. However, he still chose to watch the training of the two on the field first. The brave and powerful Kalido would only admire the brave, and if he did not have the strength to match his identity, he would only be coldly rejected by his comrades. A few people bowed slightly to Imrik and said, Your Highness, Prince. Imrik also nodded in response one by one. He didn't have any previous memories, he just needed some time to familiarize himself with this unfamiliar environment. Command others to continue the competition, 
which can be seen everywhere in Kalido. Manors built in various parts of the Dragon Ridge Mountains, as long as nobles with slightly richer families, will set up training grounds in the manors. For Kalido people, swords and cavalry will be companions, rather than poetry in painting. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Troubles You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 2 Troubles at Night The spacious study was filled with various types of books, many of which were completely out of circulation. The most precious one was undoubtedly the bookshelf with multiple layers of magical protection in the most prominent position. That is one of Az's greatest heroes, the relic of the first dragon prince and Kalido dragon tamer, which contains many precious magical manuscripts, and even the original design of the Great Vortex can be found in this bookshelf. Once, the White Tower of Haas repeatedly wanted to put these precious manuscripts under their protection in the name of Az's fate, but the proud former dragon lord did not allow those weak mages to come into contact with these treasures symbolizing the honor of Kalido. Regarding this matter, Imric can only say that Kalido and his group of dragon proud heavens are real dragon proud heavens. With these treasures, besides being able to admire the glory of their ancestors, what else can they do? On the spacious desk, Imric was learning about the specific information he had collected about Kalido in the past few days. Looking at the beautiful symbolic text in front of him, he could only be grateful that he had inherited the memory of the original owner, otherwise, he would have become illiterate. The complexity of Osir's language and writing makes it difficult for Imric to imagine that the same word has several different meanings in different moods, tones, and contexts. Coupled with the diversity of parts of speech and word cases, this means that most of the time, it may be necessary to rely on guessing to understand the other person's intended meaning. No wonder these sharp-eared people are engaged in court struggles all day long. They always speak in a fog, which is really confusing. But now is not the time to roast about how strange the Azul language is. Looking at the report in front of them, they can only gradually frown. The more they look, the more they feel that Kalido's situation is not optimistic, and they are still immersed in the glory of their ancestors. Just a month ago, Imric's father was killed by a sudden cane assassin while riding a dragon towards a multi-headed snake while fighting against Druzi. The dragon was also taken to Nagaland as a specimen material. Although the fearless dragon prince retrieved his father's body, it was undoubtedly a huge blow to Kale. Five days later, Imric will inherit the position of prince and hold a succession ceremony at the Dragon Palace, legitimately becoming the Prince of Kalido. In theory, this is not a bad thing for Imric, a traveler, as he can directly obtain the highest leadership in Kalido. However, when he is about to die, the mess left by the original owner's father can only be said to be a pure-blooded prince of Kalido. Since the coronation of the Phoenix King by Fenuba, Ojuan has become the center of world trade. Precious silk from the distant Sinian region, vodka from Kisriv, specialties from various territories of the empire, truffles from Petonia, and so on can all be found in Ojuan. Other kingdoms have earned a lot from this trade, but Kalido has not. Seeing this situation, Imric just wanted to shake up the body of the late king lying in the coffin. What do you think? These inferior races are not worthy of trading with Kalido. The dragon prince's spear can pierce through all enemies. And it's not just this matter that matters. The Val Anvil located at the end of the Dragon Ridge Mountains is experiencing a decrease in temperature due to the gradual deactivation of the volcano, resulting in a continuous decrease in the total production of military equipment. Many times, it is necessary to use some weapons from the grandfather's generation to resist foreign enemies, and as the center of Ojuan's armament manufacturing, according to the agreements between the three phoenix kings of Kalido and other kingdoms, Kalido needs to provide a large amount of equipment to other kingdoms every year, which makes the already tense armament even more difficult, but this is not free barely ensuring Kalido's financial situation. Combined with the already sparse population, this situation has become a vicious cycle. Soldiers have died due to equipment issues, and the Val Anvil requires manual maintenance. The decreasing population and lack of replacement weapons, coupled with the increasing number of sleeping dragons, 
have led to a slow decline in Kalido's military strength. Picking up the feather pen in his hand, Imric signed the letter given to him by the high priest of the Val priests. The high priest hoped that Imric could send some people from the mage tower to maintain the temperature of the volcano. Hosbeda was no longer expected, and the Val priests themselves had some conflicts with Hosbeda. They always believed that the weapons of the Hos sword saints shamelessly plagiarized Val's wisdom, and the relationship between the two sides has never been harmonious. This mess is really difficult to deal with. The rugged terrain of the Dragon Ridge Mountains makes it difficult to form large dot-scale gathering places, and coupled with the already sparse population, slow farming is definitely not enough. And Kalido's bad reputation in Ojuan cannot attract a large number of people to migrate like Etienne. We must find an overseas colony to expand and absorb population. As his gaze shifted away from the desk, Imric was immersed in his spiritual world. A book wrapped in yellow cowhide appeared in his consciousness, which was Imric's golden finger. The function of this thing was not yet understood, and every time he tried to concentrate and open it, he only lifted it halfway and there was no movement. As the time it takes to enter this world gradually increases, the extent to which it can be opened also increases. It is expected to be opened in five days, after the inheritance ceremony, hoping that this thing can have some effect. Otherwise, Imric may have to follow the original owner's behavior in the game and go around the world to search for ancient dragons to enhance Kalido's strength. After carefully examining the condition of this book again, Imric couldn't guarantee that it might be the plan of the treacherous old bird. A few days ago, he went to the Val Temple on the Val Anvil to be baptized, and except for feeling a bit tougher, there was no problem. For now, he believes that this thing is reliable and is Imric's only choice. Bowing down to continue handling the remaining paperwork, although Kalido has a lot of trouble, it is fortunate that due to the establishment of a country through military means, most disputes are resolved through fighting, and there are few endless court struggles like other kingdoms. Rare civil servants are also unable to take practical action due to their lack of influence, and the number of dragon tamer families is even rarer than the descendants of Anario. Currently, only Imric is able to determine his identity and has pure bloodline. If they want to engage in court struggles, they can only surround Imric, but with his predecessor Imric's temper, I can imagine how he would respond. Your shameless behavior is tarnishing Kalido's glory. No longer thinking too much, continue to deal with the few paperwork. Just crossing this world, Imric doesn't trust anyone to help him deal with these things, especially Asur, who is famous for his infighting. Being cautious won't be a bad thing. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Succession Ceremony You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Succession Ceremony Five days later, the succession ceremony of Prince Kalido began in the Dragon Palace. A few dozen or so giant dragons put away their huge wings and walked into the palace designed for them. The leading dragon was the leader of the current Kalido group of dragons, the descendant of the first Phoenix King Anario's companion, Indragunal, and the legendary star dragon Minas Neil. Every succession of Prince Kalido requires a dragon to witness, and sometimes the leader of the dragons becomes the most important companion in the life of the dragon lord, and this time Minas Neil is here to announce this fact. Imric, standing in the center of the palace, was surrounded by the dragon princes. The succession ceremony of the dragon lord did not require a choir or various magnificent instruments. The roar of the dragons and the battle roar of the dragon princes would be the best symphony of this ceremony. Wearing the legendary equipment of Kalido armor, Imric is waiting for the ceremony to begin. Each prince's inheritance ceremony requires people from other kingdoms to witness, and the Phoenix King will also send envoys, but now there is a little unexpected situation. Manager Morris wiped the sweat off his forehead and hurriedly rushed from the palace door to Imric's side. He had faithfully served the Dragon Tamer family for over 500 years, and his calm personality had earned him the appreciation of the late king and Imric. However, now he had encountered something that made him feel anxious. He picked up the gilded register in his hand and walked over to Imric. He lowered his head and said in some panic, Your Highness, 
there are still several envoys from the kingdom who have not arrived. The dragon princes who heard these words around couldn't suppress their anger, and their armor rustled due to the amplitude of their movements. This ceremony was originally held at the peak of the sun, but it was almost time for it to take place, and these people hadn't arrived yet. It's easy to imagine what the reason was. Seeing this situation, Morris appeared a bit panicked. He, who was not skilled in martial arts, found it difficult to resist the murderous aura of the dragon princes who had experienced battles. As the person in charge of this succession ceremony, he found it difficult to maintain his previous composure. Waving his hand to signal them to be calm, Imric spoke to Morris, but did not directly ask which kingdoms had not arrived. Which kingdoms have arrived? Hurriedly flipping through the register in his hand, Morris dared not wipe the sweat off his face. The Phoenix King has sent an envoy, and several Phoenix guards from the Platinum Flame Temple arrived yesterday. Avalon's maid brought the blessings of the Eternal Queen, the Shadow King has sent a Shadow Crown Hand, and Savory, Tiranach, Iris, and Casca have all sent envoys. Karis and Arion are doing well, while Imric sneered and nodded. He didn't expect to experience the court struggles of Ojuan during the succession ceremony. If he postponed the ceremony because of these people, he would definitely be considered a soft persimmon. These people would suggest that the Phoenix King expand the scale of weapons exported from Kalido when he participated in the War Council, and as the current Phoenix King Fenuba mascot, he would definitely agree to this approach. If it is held on time, then it can be used as an excuse to disrespect other kingdoms and take the opportunity to diminish the influence of Kalido. No matter how it is done, it will be criticized, which is really a good calculation. Without further consideration of the gains and losses, I did not want to stay in Ojuan, a place with little potential for development, for too long. After the Battle of Fenuer Plains, Imric planned to go to Luskia or the Old World to expand his colonies. This helped Asur maintain a good mentality, and in a war, unless someone with great prestige could hold the ground, military operations could also be unable to be unified due to power struggles. Ordering Morris to proceed as originally planned, this ceremony was not only a transfer of power, but also the first step for Imric to change his future destiny. As the blind Val priest's prayer began, the court, which had been somewhat noisy, gradually regained calmness. Only the heavy breathing of the dragons and the prayers of the Val priests to Val, the protector of Kalido, could be heard. The leading high priest was standing in front of the dragon claw throne, picking up the dragon headgear placed on the table with the prayer. As the voice grew louder, the crown of his head was also raised flat on his shoulder. The high priest felt Imric's position and said, Imric, please come forward. Imric, who was being watched by the crowd and the dragons, slowly stepped forward. Although the distance was not far, he still felt waves constantly in his heart. I didn't expect that as an ordinary person, would one day accept this fate. Since I have come here, I am Imric, the last descendant of Kalido, the dragon lord, and the prince. The hesitant footsteps suddenly became firm, and the exquisite pattern of the blue cloak was tattooed on it. With his movements constantly shaking, Osser's cloak often symbolized a person's identity. As a descendant of three phoenix kings, Imric can have the flame phoenix mark tattooed on it, and the last descendant of the Kalido family and the holder of the dragon horn, the fire dragon emblem will accompany him throughout his life. The leader of the dragon prince is a dragon fire cavalry, but now the blue cloak only has the fire dragon emblem, and he is Kalido. Walking in front of the high priest, he knelt down on one knee, which was a witness to the throne in front of God and a symbol of the successor's acceptance of Val's blessings. The high priest, who covered his eyes with a black cloth strip, opened his mouth, and his years of forging weapons made his voice as powerful as a hammer. Imric, do you revere the gods of Kadai in heaven? I am in awe of the gods of Kadai in heaven, and under their protection, I am able to survive. After saying these words, Imric silently said in his heart, I just hope they don't fall for me. Do you swear to defend the glory of Kalido? I swear to defend Kalido's glory with my life. The dragon princes, wielding their cavalry guns, 
heavily smashed the bottom of their guns towards the ground, making a crisp sound in a neat and uniform motion, indicating that the military nobles recognized Imrik. The voice of High Priest Val gradually expanded, and echoes could be heard in the magnificent palace. Can you defend the lives of the dragons? Upon hearing these words, Minas Neil and the dragons all stared at the little guy in front of them. One of the most important responsibilities of the dragon lord was to guard the dragon group in Kalido. Looking back at Minas Neil, he noticed that he was also staring at him, pounding his armor with his hand. I swear, as a descendant of the dragon tamer family, that I will defend to the death the lives of the Kalido dragons. The dragon group roared, and the Kalido people, who had undergone long dot term training, naturally knew what it meant. Previously, Imrik had been recognized by the dragons for using his life to protect Manasnir, but this time it was a formal statement. The high priest placed the crown over Imrik, leaving only one question. Imrik could inherit his father's identity. Do you respect the rule of the Phoenix King and recognize his royal authority in Ojuan? Generally speaking, the succession ceremony of other kingdoms asks whether to obey the rule of the Phoenix King, but Kalido is unique, and the proud Kalido people will not even lower the flag for the arrival of the Phoenix King. Although the Phoenix King envoy observing the ceremony nearby did not show any abnormalities, he was calculating how to give a small report to Fenuba after returning to the Phoenix King's court. I respect the rule of the Phoenix King and recognize his royal authority in Ojuan. The blind priest accurately placed the crown on Imrik's raised hand and announced it to Asur and the dragons in the palace. Now, Imrik is the prince of Kalido, the dragon lord, and the leader of the dragon prince. After announcing this news, the sound of cavalry smashing to the ground, the roar of dragons, and the succession ceremony in Kalido were so simple. Every member of the dragon tamer family became a famous hero in Ojuan, even Kalido too, who was beheaded by the Dwarf King, was also an extraordinary warrior with extraordinary martial arts skills. There was no need for a choir to sing about his achievements, even though Imrik was only a warrior who had not yet gained much fame in various kingdoms, there must be some achievements in the future. Wearing his crown, Imrik slowly sat on the dragon claw throne, looking at the palace in front of him. Only half of the grand palace was occupied, and whether it was the dragon prince or the giant dragon, it was much smaller than the large number at the time of its establishment. After a moment, Minas Neil left the dragon pack and walked to the door of the palace, but did not fly away. Instead, he looked at Imrik in the palace with his pointed, crown-like head. Others who saw this situation felt a sense of suffocation due to surprise, especially the dragon princes in Kalido. Each dragon was extremely precious due to the dragon falling asleep and being killed by the malicious Druzi. Currently, there are no more than 20 dragons active in the Kalido sky, and not every of these 20 dragons has a dragon prince as a companion. And now, they can see a scene that can only be seen in the legends left by their ancestors, where a shining star dragon recognized an Asur as its companion. Taking the Ancestral Weapon The Star Cavalry Spear from the attendant's hand, this weapon carried the blessing of the radiant star dragon. As long as the roar of the dragons echoed over Kalido, this blessing would never disappear. Imrik walked outside the palace under the gaze of everyone. Proud Manasnir lowered his noble neck in order to allow the little one to reach his back smoothly. As a dragon that had lived for thousands of years, Manasnir also knew about the court struggles within Asur. From the reports of General Morris and Imrik earlier, he also understood that the young prince of Kalido's situation was not very good now. Its move is not only to recognize this little guy as its companion, but also to announce to other kingdoms that Kalido is not a soft persimmon, and that the dragon and the dragon prince can defend Kalido's honor. Waiting for Imrik to come to his back, he shook his huge shoulders and gestured for him to hold on firmly. With a roar, Manasnir flew directly towards the Dragon Ridge Mountains. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Minas Neil's Trust You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Minas Neil's Trust The giant dragon flying in the sky roared incessantly around the Dragon Ridge Mountains. 
Imric knew what it meant, which was to use it as a deterrent force to deter the little ones, caressing the deep blue rough scales on Manasnir's body. Imric could feel the determination of this noble creature. And the scattered residents couldn't help but exclaim in surprise when they saw the huge figure flying over from the top. The appearance of each dragon signifies the enhancement of Kalido's strength. For the highly honored Kalido people, it is something that can make them happy for a long time. Finally, the dragon, which had been flying for a long time, stopped flapping its wings and arrived at a mountain range. Imric knew from his memory that this was the nest of Minisnil and the place where one person and one dragon first met. The dragon let Imric, who was sitting on it, come first and then stared at Imric with his huge head. Suddenly, a voice came from Imric's mind, sounding like a middle-aged man's voice, deep and magnetic. However, the words spoken by this voice made Imric feel a bit scared. You're not Imric, tell me who you are, he said looking at the bright eyes of the dragon in front of him, there seemed to be a hint of doubt. Imric realized that this voice must be from Minas Neil. For dragons who have reached the level of the star dragon, this kind of spiritual dialogue is not difficult. For this matter, Imric was actually prepared for it long ago. Whether facing the mysterious and unpredictable Ceylon demon toad or the Pokémon who always liked to deceive people, he could definitely see that he was not the essence of the original product. However, he did not expect that the first thing he saw was the Dragon Prince's closest dragon companion in the original plot. He didn't silently recite in his heart, but spoke in direct response, Indeed, I'm not Imric. Imric died while saving you. Upon hearing these words, Minas Neil's eyes showed a hint of sadness, but he continued to communicate with Imric through telepathy, so who are you? If it's those chaotic tricks, they will directly reveal their prototype when facing me. After thinking for a moment, I wanted the full support of this giant dragon. If I were to lie, I would definitely be noticed. Don't underestimate the perception of these creatures. They are smarter than humans, so I confessed my identity. I am from another world and accidentally traveled to Ojuan. I also express my regret for Imric's death. Explain some things to Manasnir clearly, such as his identity, the future events of this world, and how he plans to develop Kalido. However, just as he was about to say the end to it, the cowhide book in the spiritual realm, which remained motionless from beginning to end, suddenly shook violently, causing Imric to feel dizzy and dizzy, and intense pain came from his mind, under severe pain, one can only hold their head to relieve it. Is it telling me that I can't say the end to anyone? Although the intense pain had a significant impact, Imric seemed to understand something. This book must have been telling him this information, otherwise why there was no response to the previously mentioned battles of the Finyavar Plains and the Elven Wars. The Kalhide book began to calm down, without any shaking, and the intense pain gradually dissipated. Imric was panting heavily, while Manasnir watched Imric's painful embrace of his head due to the intense pain. Just now it was communicating with Imric's spirit, but just as Imric was about to say something extremely important, the communication suddenly broke down. As for why they knew that the person in front of them was not Imric, it was actually because when Imric was young, he gave a blessing to his soul, which was a promise between the dragon tamer and the dragons, but now this blessing has expired. The dragon let out a series of low growls, and this time there was no further use of spiritual communication. As the prince of Kalido, Imric naturally understood the meaning conveyed by the dragon's low growls. It was saying, you have many secrets, and I cannot determine whether your secrets come from gods, ancient saints, chaos, or something I do not know, but I choose to trust you for the time being, Imric. Staring at the giant dragon in front of him, Imric extended his hand, while Minas Neil, who was familiar with Aza customs, also lifted his huge dragon claws and touched Imric's hand. We will be the closest comrades in arms, Minas Neil, he said Imric also knew that it would take a long time to make this dragon believe in him, but now is a good start. Retracted its dragon claws and pressed it onto the ground. Upon hearing Imric's words, the dragon let out a low roar that seemed like laughter. This laughter did not convey any substantive information. 
The dragon lowered its neck and asked Imric to climb back onto its body, intending to return to the dragon palace. The flying speed of dragons is very fast. In ancient times, before the temperature of planets could rise due to the adjustment of the ancient saint's orbit, dragons relied on extraordinary speed and claws to harvest creatures crawling on the ground. At that time, the ancestors of the giant dragons competed with the fearsome lizards for world hegemony, and the result was that the giant dragons were distributed throughout the world except in Luskia, and the existing fearsome lizards may not be able to find ten in Luskia. Returning to the Dragon Palace, Manasnir stated that he needed to go back to his lair and take a deep sleep. He estimated that he would not be able to wake up within six months, and then spread his huge wings and left. Watching its departing figure, Imric felt somewhat grateful that he had encountered a rational star dragon. If it were an unreasonable demon toad like Master Ma, who knew he came from another world, the first thing he might do was throw himself into the Tyrannosaurus Rex pit. Maurice, the general waiting outside the palace, rushed to Imric's side. For him, as a court official, approaching a shining star dragon alone required immense courage, not to mention the dragon power emanating from Minas Neal's body. Your Highness, the ceremony has ended. Do you need to prepare some food for you? You bring some food to the study and have everyone in the court leave, he said in response the most safe way to check what situation is urgently needed in the spiritual world is to adjust the state first and then let others leave. Fortunately, it was not during an emergency to travel here, otherwise these ten days of waiting would have made people live and die. Morris lowered his head to say he knew, but did not ask Imric why he had let the people of the court leave. There were only over twenty maids and ten attendants in the Dragon Palace, and these maids, because the previous prince and Imric had a very indifferent attitude towards men and women, mostly married people outside, and the two princes had never met. As for whether the people who marry them will worry about Imric wearing hats for them, there is a consensus among the Kalido people that the pure bloodline of dragon tamers will think that dragons are much more beautiful than women, which is a common occurrence. Imric now also feels that dragons have a much greater sensory stimulation on him than those of Azza women, and can only hope that this is not a conspiracy of lust. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Dark Wanderers You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Dark Wanderers Returning to the Study, This may be the safest place in the palace except for the basement. Many of the spells in the study were personally arranged by the ancestor Kalido Dragon Tamer, and have not expired after thousands of years. As the only high elf who has received guidance from Lord Croca, the most powerful toad priest, the Dragon Tamer spells have not been effective. Therefore, Imric can only consider going to the Platinum Flame Temple to open the Cowhide Book. After eating some food prepared by Morris for himself, it must be said that Osir truly knows how to enjoy it. The Dragon Palace does not pay attention to whether the food is delicious, but he can still serve himself different dishes every day for these ten days, and the taste is also excellent. After feeling prepared, Imric looked at his equipment. He wore the dragon crown bestowed by Val on his head, the legendary Kalido armor, the dragon horn on the table, and the sword hanging from his waist, which was also a legendary weapon, forged from dragon fire and enchanted by Val priests. Thinking of Val priests, Imric could only sigh. The Val priests actually use their own vitality to craft their equipment. In order to prevent the chaos invasion in the magic wind from tarnishing the skills taught by Val, they can only pierce their eyes and use their tongues to sense the temperature of forging. However, Osur does not have the Doomsday Anvil, like the Rune Blacksmith of Dwarves, which can seal runes almost at no cost. Each rune seal requires the priests to pay the price of vitality. Thinking of the late envoys who arrived at noon, I couldn't help but grip the sword handle in my hand. These weapons were all crafted with the lives of the children of Kalido, but in the end, they were sold and performed by those who pursued profits. Afterwards, I had to find ways to reduce the export scale, and the financial problem needed to be solved in other ways. Without further thought, Imric focused on examining the cowhide book in his spiritual world, exerted all his strength, and finally opened the first page. Then he saw something that surprised him a bit. 
At first, he thought it would be some magical skills or techniques, even the system panel wouldn't surprise him so much. But on the flipped paper, there was a humanoid skull with a black hood, a hole on its forehead, and a crack at the bridge of its nose. The overall pattern was dark red, appearing somewhat eerie. Upon careful observation, it seemed very familiar, and then suddenly thought of it. Isn't this the Dark Wanderer from the Diablo II promotional image? How could it appear here? Feeling very eerie, the more I look at this thing, the more it feels like a conspiracy of a cunning old bird. Although the Dark World is also full of demons, compared to a hopeless place like Warhammer, at least there is still a high dot level heaven and Nafe heavenly summit. Although there are many nonsense, it can still continue. Is it planning to use myself as a coordinate point to release the demons in the dark world? However, there was no response to the surrounding anti-corrosion inscriptions, including the head cap on his head blessed by Val. He also thought that if he could get the rune system in Diablo II, he would not have to sacrifice the lives of Kalido's sons and daughters to become human blood mantu. Imric gritted his teeth and planned to do it. No matter what the purpose of this thing is, there will always be a slight change. Based on our current situation, unless we can pull out a modern level group army in 500 dragons at the end of the game, there will be no effect in fighting against the final eternal divine selection. Carefully observing the photo of the Dark Wanderer, Imric was quickly caught in the void on his forehead and felt a spin, losing consciousness. Shaking his dizzy head, Imric first observed the surroundings. He lay on a wooden stake on the ground, with a campfire in front of him and an entrance to the city gate behind him. Torches of varying brightness hung on the walls of the neighboring houses, giving him a clear view of the surrounding terrain. Seeing this somewhat familiar scene, Imric said with some confusion, is this the selection interface? Standing up, he first checked the surroundings. The campfire was very real, with sparks constantly flying out, and the sound of wood burning creaked. The closer he got to the campfire, the more he could feel the temperature. Imric tried to check the surrounding houses, but an invisible air wall blocked his way forward. Sitting back on the wooden stake and recalling some game designs from Diablo II, there were seven characters to choose from. The position where I woke up earlier was in the middle right relative to the city gate, which was the position of the paladin. In the character introduction, the paladin was the leader of the team, but he didn't have any equipment on him, only a linen regular uniform, without any knightly appearance at all. Is it difficult for me to find six people to follow me in order to enter Diablo II? After observing for a while, I found that there was no change. The moon on top of my head didn't even move, and the wood in the campfire didn't shrink because of burning. It was the same as at the beginning, but the cowhide book in the spiritual world also disappeared. Seeing this situation, Imric just wanted to roast. I am a character for people to choose from. At least give me a mouse click to confirm and exit the game. As soon as I finished speaking, I suddenly felt my consciousness spinning again. After a brief coma, I opened my eyes. This time, I was in my own study, frowning and thinking about the situation I had just encountered. After saying that I wanted to quit the game, I immediately exited, indicating that I could choose independently. But why can't I start? Do we really need to gather seven people to start? Attempting to open the cowhide book of the spiritual world again, I found no movement, but the book cover changed and added a Roman letter written in black ink. 3. Did this thing enter the CD again? This thing is a bit eerie, and it makes Imric feel even more like a cunning old bird's plan. It must be careful and cautious. Power often comes with the cost, but if you want to gain power without paying the cost, it is completely absurd. This is a gamble, just betting whether this thing can change the fate of the end. But suddenly he thought of the scene where the original owner was flipped over by Tyrion holding the cane sword. Imric only felt a burst of anger, I don't want to be a stepping stone for Marikis and Tyrion, or a sacrifice for a Suyan struggle with Cain. Even if this is a conspiracy of the cunning old bird, I admit it. With this in mind, he took out a roster from the cabinet and planned to find six people to follow him to Diablo II. 
at least he had to master the rune language and the forging skills of the barbarians of Mount Arate. He could also try the Herald and Blocks, and the World Stone could only be fought for as much as possible. The world of the Shelter may be different from here, and the World Stone's greatest function may be to serve as an enhanced version of the Guide Stone to stabilize the magic wind, but that's enough. With the help of runes and the forging skills of barbarians, there are two doomsday anvils captured in the Battle of Longbeard in the basement of the palace. Create an Osur version and have the High Priest go to the Old World to try which one is better with Iron Eyebrow. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Task Candidates You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Task Candidates After pondering for a whole night, Imric was not tired. Although he was a traveler, it was very important to cross over to whom. The original owner was the only person in the elven civil war who had pierced through the Inerio dragon armor. Although he knelt after two moves with Tyrion, it also depended on who he fought against. Tyrion, holding the cane sword, had already become the cane incarnation. In the end, it was estimated that only Marikis with a Suyan's power in hand, a keen equipped with the six divine artifacts and the four divine blessings, as well as Sigma holding Galmaraz and the Death Wind incarnation were in full play. How many big bones can fight him? Overall, although Imric, who is still young, has not yet reached its peak in strength, he can be considered a top warrior in Kael Dun. If he were to be paired with Minas Neil as a pendant, he would definitely be one of Osur's top figures. After crossing over, he also perfectly inherited the original owner's strength, which can be said to be a wild start. Six candidates have been identified, including three dragon princes, two mages, and one Val priest. In order to consider loyalty, Imric has chosen a family that has been loyal to the dragon tamers for thousands of years, and has found relevant information about their ancestors from internal reports of the Dragon Tamer family. From external factors, loyalty is completely reliable. And in terms of combat effectiveness, there is also a guarantee. The three Dragon Princes are all characters who have survived the war with Druzzi and Chaos for years, while the two mages were trained inside the Kalido Flame Tower and did not go to the White Tower to communicate. The chosen Val Priest is the descendant of the current High Priest, whose ancestor was the legendary Val Priest who personally forged the Inerio dragon armor. The craftsmanship of the High Priest's son is absolutely unknown, and the ancestors in the family also maintain close contact with the Dragon Tamer family. And how to deceive them, Imric had already thought of it. When the Elven Civil War broke out, Tigris and Lilith teamed up to create a fake daydream for the original owner allowing the dragon tamer to appear in the dream, saying that Marikis was the phoenix king of fate. To be honest, Imric completely felt that this was caused by these two great A-war criminals, so the Great Whirlpool was not located on the server. If there was a daydream effect, Didric would not have gone to become the eternal god chosen Akeen when praying at Aldolf Cathedral because Sigma was disconnected. And now, Imric plans to use this method to deceive these few people, saying that the Dragon Tamer gave himself a dream and used powerful spells to find ways to other worlds to save the gradually weakening Kalido and Ojuan. You are the choice of the Dragon Tamers. If you perform well, you will become Kalido's champion warriors in the future. I made up my mind to squint on the chair for a while, and then someone would call them to the Dragon Palace. This would be the best opportunity to change Kalido in the short term, and technology from another world would ignite new hope. Three days later, a few people who arrived at the Dragon Palace were taken to the reception hall by the maids. Three fully armed dragon princes, two flame mages in fiery red robes holding staff, and a Val priest with a hammer sat on chairs in the reception hall, looking at each other. They suddenly received an urgent notice three days ago, asking them to prepare to come to the Dragon Palace to meet Imric, but did not specify what was going on. Due to military tradition, the six of them did not dare to ask more questions and rushed over from a far distance. Then they were taken here by the maid. The maid poured wine for the few of them, saying that Imric would arrive later. The few sat in the reception hall, 
holding glasses and chatting casually, mostly about interesting recent experiences, without mentioning some sensitive issues, such as their views on the newly crowned prince. After waiting for about 20 minutes, Imrik arrived and saw the newly crowned prince arrive in the reception hall. The few people quickly stood up and bowed their heads, as Imrik was a direct descendant of the dragon tamer, and with Manasnir's recognition of him during the succession ceremony, there was no controversy, both internally and externally. Now that Imrik only needed to have a brilliant victory in the war against Druzi, then everyone in Kalido would not have any concerns about his rule. Nod to each of them and observe them carefully. The three dragon princes are named Masno, Bruni, and Davian respectively. The dragon helmets on their heads have two sections of upward extending dragon wings, and the shield placed at their feet has the family emblem. Due to being face dot to dot face, they did not carry the iconic cavalry gun, but hung a long sword at their waist. Generally, the equipment of the three is similar, but the first two are much older, over 400 years old, skilled in combat, and experienced. And Davian is about the same age as himself, more than 230 years old, equivalent to a young man in Asur. However, I have great confidence in Davian as a young man. His previous achievements have included many achievements in fighting against Druzi, and his own strength is also very good. In addition, his family has always been very loyal, making him a talent worthy of vigorous cultivation. The two mages, named Hadars and Duret, were locally trained in the Flame Tower. Their casting abilities and knowledge were also outstanding. With them, Imrik had other ideas. The magic wind in Warhammer World is essentially chaotic energy. Although the chaotic energy inside is greatly diluted by the purification of the Great Vortex, users still need to be very careful when using it, otherwise the chaos of the magic wind inside the body may lead to very serious consequences. In areas with a high wind of magic, the power of spells can be greatly enhanced, but the problem that comes with it is that demons will notice this, and a portal to the subspace may appear at any time, teleporting a group of demons. Ojuin uses a network of guide stones to stabilize the wind of magic. However, if he wants to solve this problem in the upcoming external war, the magic of the dark world is a good idea, it depends on whether they can learn something. Professional things need to be solved by professionals, and Imrik did not expect to understand the magic of the dark world. Val Blacksmith Coster is the most important figure in this operation. In Diablo II, the hammer that can enchant equipment in the monastery, the hell hammer and furnace in the river of fire, the heradium block that converts objects, the technique used by the barbarians of the Arate Mountains to punch holes in equipment, and the rune system are all things that Imrik must take down. As for the percentage healing potion, it depends on whether it is in the real world or the game world. Let them keep up with him. Imrik plans to go to the study to communicate with them. The place is safer, and a few people follow Imrik into the huge palace. Although it's not their first time here, they always marvel at the vastness of the palace. Upon arriving at the study, Imrik did not sit down, but turned to look at the six people in front of him. The three dragon princes and priests did not show any change in their faces as they arrived at the prince's residence. They remained serious, but the two mages were different. When they first entered, they could feel how powerful the seal of the bookshelf spell was, especially the dragon tamer emblem placed on the most prominent bookshelf, which was hard to conceal the shock in their eyes. Unexpectedly, the rumor was true. There were indeed manuscripts of the dragon tamer himself hidden in the dragon palace, but they quickly regained their senses and faced Imrik, who looked serious. Graham. He placed his hand on the dragon horn at his waist, and Imrik looked seriously at the people in front of him, intending to go straight to the topic and speak, these are all excellent members of Kalido. Masno, Bruni, and Davian, the three of you have achieved great accomplishments on the battlefield that I admire very much. Upon hearing these words, the three royal dragons immediately straightened their bodies, striving to showcase their best selves to the prince. They all said in unison, for the glory of Kalido. 
Then he said to the two mages, Hadars, Duret, you two have always adhered to the beliefs of Kalido in the Flame Tower and did not accept the invitation of the White Tower of Hose. Thank you for your persistence. Hadars and Duret also caressed their chests with their hands and said something similar to the Dragon Prince, the flames of Kalido never go out. Nodding, fortunately, I have traveled to Kalido. If I were in other countries in Ojuan, I would definitely be ready to face palace conspiracies at any time in the past decade or so. How could I have the time and influence to find a few reliable combat forces? Finally, he turned to the Val Priest Coster, who is the son of the current High Priest and is highly likely to inherit his father's position. If this is considered an honor or a family monopoly, Imric must let him taste the power of the Star Lance. The lifespan of each high priest often does not exceed 550 years, and in times of war it will only be shorter. This is undoubtedly short. Lived for Asur, who has an average lifespan of thousands of years. They used their lives to support the proud backbone of Kalido. Thank you to your family for their silent dedication to Kalido. The Val priests have supported Kalido's spine. Koster silently responded to Imric's words, for the glory of Kalido. He is the eldest son and will definitely inherit his father's mantle, while his younger brother has become a dragon prince, so it can only be said that fate is like this. The six of them actually had some doubts in their hearts. It should be noted that in the past, Imric was not this kind of personality, especially Masno and Bruni. As servants of the former king, they had many encounters with Imric. In their interactions with Imric, they believed that he was definitely a typical member of the Dragon Tamer family, arrogant, valued honor and commitment. Although they would retract the arrogance that spread in their bloodline when facing their own people, it would definitely not be this kind of behavior. After speaking, Imric continued to speak with a more serious expression than before. I have an important task assigned to you now, which will change Kalido's fate, but it requires absolute confidentiality. Even your closest relatives and friends cannot disclose it, and you cannot speak to the gods during prayer. If there is no such belief, you can leave. I will not have any prejudice against anyone. A few people remained silent, changing the fate of Kalido. This was undoubtedly a glorious task. For the three dragon princes, the oath they made to the dragon tamer family prevented them from leaving, and the two mages were no exception. The most difficult task to solve was actually Coaster, who had made a vow to Val. All of them looked at Coaster. Coaster, who was being watched by everyone, also sensed that others were looking at him. He took out a dragon emblem from his pocket and said, I am from Kalido and I will not leave. Looking at them with satisfaction, Imric felt that his vision was right and that all the people he had found were reliable. As for breaking his promise, Imric had considered this issue, but he felt a little relieved when he thought that the Kalido people were a bit like dwarves with dead minds. If these people couldn't believe it, he would have to go to the Eternal Peak to find a few long bearded broken iron to accompany him through the Dark World. Great, this task will determine Kalido's fate, and I will accompany you to complete it together. After speaking, he opened the cowhide book in his spiritual world, then looked at the few people in front of him with his eyes, and then distracted himself by the hole on the forehead of the Dark Wanderer. His consciousness once again felt a spin and fell into darkness. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Deceiving Honest People You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 7 Deceiving Honest People With the reason for using the cowhide book for the first time, Imric seemed to wake up much faster than last time. He sat on the wooden stake and carefully examined himself and his surroundings. He was still wearing the same linen clothes as before, while the other six people were also lying in front of the other wooden stakes. The environment was still as it had been from the beginning, with moonlight shining through the floating clouds and reaching the ground. The temperature of the campfire and the creaking of sparks made him stand up and walk towards the side. There was still an air wall blocking the way, and Imric, anticipating this outcome, sat back on the wooden stake, waiting for the other six people to wake up. Davian was the first to wake up. 
He was excitedly waiting in his study for the task to be assigned by Imrik, but he still had to maintain his surface calmness. As a young man who longed for honor, although he had already achieved many honors that Asur could not imagine at this age, he believed it was not enough. He longed to fly in the sky with his dragon companions like his ancestors, and then rush into the enemy to take down the heads of those fearful lords, obtaining supreme glory. While waiting for the command, I saw the prince's gaze somewhat relaxed as he looked at him, and then his consciousness seemed to be thrown into a vortex, constantly rolling, and finally losing consciousness and falling into darkness. Slowly opening his eyes, he heard a voice say, Not bad, you are the best quality among the people who came this time. Upon hearing this sound, Davian suddenly opened his eyes and habitually wanted to draw his sword from his waist to make a defensive position. However, when his hand touched his waist, he found nothing. Looking at the source of the sound, he found that the speaker was his Prince Imric, who looked at him with a smile on his face. Stay calm, don't let the prince think I'm a reckless person, Davian murmured in his heart at this moment. So he spoke up, his suppressed voice appearing very calm. Your Highness, where is this? At the beginning, as he sat on the wooden stake and looked at the few people lying around, Imric thought of a very familiar scene and couldn't help but imitate it. However, Davian's reaction did not surprise him. Don't worry, I'll tell you what the situation is when the rest of the people wake up, he said nodding to show his understanding, Davian sat on the wooden stake behind him and looked around. The ancient architecture and style were obviously not in Osir's style, but rather somewhat similar to the style of the Bartonian monkey he knew. It was also so simple and dilapidated, completely different from Osir's exquisite and gorgeous style. Moreover, his equipment was also missing, only clothes similar to the linen worn by the prince. How could this lowly material match the noble Kalido people? Even in places like Karis where there are many savage inhabitants, such lowly clothes would not be worn. A few others also woke up one after another, and initially had a similar reaction to Davian. After Imric asked them to sit down, they waited around the bonfire for Imric to explain clearly. The surrounding environment was obviously completely different from Ojuan, as if they had suddenly thrown themselves into a corner of the old world, which made them feel a bit panicked. However, seeing Imric's calm expression, they could only endure their unease and wait for Imric to clarify. Seeing everyone else waking up, he decided to tell them the words he had prepared and said, I'm glad everyone came here safely. This must be the protection of our ancestors who train dragons. Dragon Tamer This name in Kalido represents more than just the most important monarch. Although the six people sitting here have some connection to the Dragon Tamer, there is only one person today who can call the Dragon Tamer their ancestor. However, why mention the Dragon Tamer? Several people are waiting for Imric to continue. After pausing for a moment, he continued, on the night I took over the responsibilities of my deceased father and became a prince, my ancestor, the dragon tamer, appeared in my dream and prophesied about the disasters that Azza would encounter in the future. In order for Azza to survive these disasters, the ancestor used special magic to send me to a different world. The technology and knowledge here will restore Kalido to the glory of his ancestor Imric's era, and you are a common choice between the ancestor and me. The ancestor Imric did not refer to Imric who is now speaking, but to the third phoenix king, Imric who was posthumously named the Conqueror King. Under his leadership, Asur defeated the Nagarez army led by Marikis and drove them out of Ojuan. At that time, the hundreds of dragons flying in the sky were the most powerful moment of Kalido, and the six people sitting there all had ancestors of dragon prince ancestors who rode dragons to fight. Naturally, they understood how powerful Kalido was at that time. After saying these words, the three dragon princes led by them couldn't hold their breath anymore. Their excitement could be felt from their somewhat rapid breathing. Masno and Bruni had been fighting on the front line for a long time, and they were the ones who could most intuitively feel the decline of Kalido's strength. However, Davian was thinking that if he could find his dragon companion, it would be an unparalleled glory. Prince, are you true? Restore the glory of our ancestors. 
The attitude carefully determined their problem, and it is indeed highly possible that this matter. Although the problem of the dragon sleeping has not been solved yet, as long as the military's equipment can keep up with it and each person has an exquisite weapon, they cannot still hang the group of Duruki. I guarantee with the honor of my family that we will restore the glory of our ancestors' era. Imrik played around for a moment, not saying that the first half was true, but only guaranteeing the second half. After all, he couldn't joke about his ancestors casually. Anyway, the identity of a descendant of the Dragon Tamer family brought him a lot of convenience. If he became a Bardo farmer, he might struggle for two to ten years to barely get into the identity of a Night Ranger. The other few people also had no problem. When the Dragon Tamer and Kalido were revived, any proud Asura would not hesitate and would be ready to go. I noticed their positions, but they seemed to be randomly sorted and not arranged in the order of characters in Diablo 2. Imrik didn't expect to get a game panel and then level up to level 90 to return to Ajuan. If that's the case, I'll just bring a few people to brush it every few days. Finally, I'll train all 800 dragon princes in Kalido to the level of being able to kill monsters alone. Counterattacking the subspace is not a dream. I prepared for it and said in Chinese, let's start the game. Subsequently, a similar situation occurred, with darkness gradually enveloping consciousness. End of this chapter. Chapter 8. Blood Wasteland You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Blood Wasteland Quickly, Imrik woke up and found himself in a dilapidated house, with moldy wood, straw on the bed, and black charcoal in the fireplace all indicating that the house had long been uninhabited. I lean against the edge of the bed, while the other six people are located in various positions of the house. There is no urgent need to check the surrounding environment, and one thing needs to be checked first, which is the condition of the cowhide book. Concentrate and discover that the cowhide book is in the sea of consciousness, trying to open it with all his attention, but this time he didn't spend too much energy, just like reading a book with ease. The first page opened was still the pattern of the Dark Wanderer. Imrik tried to continue flipping through it and found that it was indeed possible. On the second page, there are seven column tables, like a register, and there are several data in the tables. Name, occupation, skills, written in English with a feather pen as the medium of writing. Imrik can tell that the first column contains his own information, which is clearly written on it. Name. Imrik, occupation. Paladin, skill. Blank. But the others are different. Masno and Bruni are both paladins like themselves, while Davian and Coaster are savages, Hadars and Duret are mages and druids respectively. Well, this is really a rough lineup, without a long dot range shooter or an assassin. Resisting the thought of roast, he continued to scroll down to see if there was something similar to the class panel, but there was no such thing. When Imrik was pondering over the relationship between this class and skills, he suddenly thought of something in Diablo 2, that is, additional skill points. Is the way to point skills the extra skill points obtained by completing those tasks? Good guy, if that's the case, Imrik felt a bit excited when he thought about the attack and protection aura effects in the paladin skills. However, it's not the time to think about it now. It's better to figure out this place first, preferably near Rog Camp, so he can directly go to Akra's place to take on the mission, then kill the body and get angry to verify this idea. He didn't have much equipment on his body, and was still dressed in linen clothes. He casually pulled off the legs of the wooden table and waved it, feeling that his strength had not weakened. Apart from the inadequate equipment on his body, in the first act, this place may be a full-level large player entering the novice village, crushing him without pressure. Waiting for a few people to wake up, Imrik walked to the window and looked outside. He found many monsters like zombies and giant mice constantly hovering in the open territory. With Asil's keen vision and the body blessed by the dragon, he could vaguely see some red long-horned little demons surrounding the stone pillar in the distance. This place should be a bloody wasteland outside of Rog Camp, with only zombies, hard-haired mice, and sunken demons. While Imrik was still pondering, 
several people also woke up one by one. When they saw Imrik holding a wooden stick and looking outside, they quickly asked him what the situation was. Explaining to several people, our ancestors used magic to teleport us to this world, which is similar to ours, invaded by those ugly demons. Our ancestors gave me some tips to help the people of this world resist the invasion of demons and save them, because the people here are very different from us. On the next journey, do not speak freely when facing the people of this world. I am very worried that these few dragon-proud heavens will directly judge people through their nostrils and then fly away the skill points they need to obtain. I need to restrain their behavior before continuing. Hadars, Duret, can you too cast spells? This is one of the most important purposes of experimenting with this trip first. If you can walk the blue bar mage, you may be able to get rid of the influence of many magical winds. Hadars and Duret tried to condense a flame from their hands, and the brightness of the flame was not low, illuminating the entire room. However, their furrowed brows indicated that they must have encountered some problem, so they quickly asked. The two of them were led by Hadars, who spent more time in the flame tower than Duret. He did not extinguish the flames in his hand and still frowned, Prince, we usually use our internal energy to activate the magical wind on the battlefield to release spells. The current situation is that we can feel energy similar to the magical wind around us, but it is difficult to mobilize. We can only cast spells with the energy in our body, but the energy consumption is much less than expected. Very good, it's similar to what I expected. Imrik didn't want to ask too much about why this situation was happening. He wanted professional things for professionals to think about, which he had already understood before. So he ordered the two of them, I need you to pay attention to the way this magic is used, and it's best to summarize the rules. The wizard who was using the flame nodded, extinguished the flame in his hand, and waited for Imrik's next command. Let them find a few wooden sticks to defend themselves. Although they should be able to reach Log Camp with bare hands, it still feels like there's nothing missing in their hands. Seeing that several people were ready, Imrik led them out of the abandoned room and shouted loudly towards the bloody wasteland outside, Big Pineapple, wait to die. Masno and Bruni looked at Imrik's inexplicable movements, their eyes exchanged for a moment, as if they were saying, is the prince having a mental cramp? Why is he shouting inexplicably? There are only some undead creatures and big mice outside, where are the big pineapples? But Imrik didn't care about their thoughts. He took the legs of the table that had been removed from the wooden table and directly attacked the zombie that was approaching when he heard his roar. With the law of speed and force, the zombie's hard head did not explode, but its fragile spine clearly couldn't withstand this force. The zombie's neck broke and its head flew towards the side. Imrik, who had killed a zombie, quickly opened the bull book to see if a new interface would appear. According to the game's rules, even low-dot-level enemies would have some experience points, but unfortunately, expectations became illusory. The bull book remained as it had just been, without any movement. Seeing this scene, Imrik was a bit angry. It was simply adding difficulty to the game, and he straightened his arms towards a zombie, loudly ordering six people, proud Kalido knights, take down these ugly monsters and charge with me. Masno and Bruni looked at each other again, who had fought side by side many times and were very familiar with each other. Their eyes seemed to be saying, is the prince not mentally normal due to the manifestation of his ancestors? This weak and slow dot moving zombie still needs to charge. Just as the two were still making eye contact, Davian had already rushed out. Ever since he first heard Imrik accept the mission of a dragon tamer to save the world invaded by demons, the young man who longed for honor could no longer contain his excitement and couldn't wait to win the honor. Saving the world is an honor that only a few people in Ojuan have. The first guardians of the Phoenix King, Anario, and Ojuan, Kalido the dragon tamer, thought of these honors made Davian eager to show himself. Although it was only a few undead creatures, Davian believed that this was the first step in honor. The hero in countless stories did not start by killing the weakest. Seeing that Doyen was already holding a chicken leg stick and walking forward, 
the remaining few people couldn't continue to fish. They began to show some real skills, and after a hundred years of combat training, these zombies were completely unable to resist. They quickly cleaned up their surroundings. End of this chapter. Chapter 9. Rog Camp You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 9 Rog Camp on the Blood Wasteland, groups of four Rogers are patrolling. Since the Dark Wanderers released a large number of demons in the monastery, Rogers Camp has become the only remaining safe place in this area. Rogers need to hunt nearby monsters and then escort civilians to Rogers Camp. Just as a few people were carefully inspecting the surroundings, they saw several people wearing worn dot out clothes walking towards them. Although they were only holding wooden sticks in their hands, their formation and walking style showed that they were soldiers who had been trained for many years. One of the leaders, Roger, signaled to the others to follow. Each soldier was an important fighting force against the army of hell and should be fought for as much as possible. And Imric had already seen those people holding bows and arrows, and based on their equipment, he speculated that they should be rogue mercenaries, so he approached them, but also made others remain vigilant. Anyway, he himself and his companions were outsiders, essentially similar to evil demons. If something unexpected happens, he should take action first. The teams on both sides were constantly getting closer, and Imric waved his hand to let the other few people relax their guard and put down their wooden sticks, and the Rogers did the same. Led by Roger, he had long black hair and was wearing lightweight leather armor that would not affect his movements. He held a bow in his hand and a sword hanging from his waist. It was strange to see the different looks of the people in Imric. The seven of them were all blonde or blue-eyed, with a very handsome appearance and a tall figure. Their ears were much sharper than the average person, but apart from this, they were no different from the average person. Rog, who was holding a bow and arrow, spoke up first and said, Are you the ones who fled here? What she said was in English, and Imric could only be grateful that he had studied this thing seriously when he was in college. When he heard her say escape, he quickly nodded. We are refugees whose homes were destroyed due to the invasion of hell. Under the guidance of an elder, we want to go to Log Camp to search for blind nun Acra. Upon closer observation of Imric and his group, the linen clothes on his body appeared to have not been changed for a long time, and there was still a lot of dust. Coupled with the wooden stick in his hand, which was used as a temporary weapon, Imric's argument was extremely convincing. However, upon observing the Val priest Coster wearing a cloth strip to cover his eyes behind the team, Logue felt that Coster might also be a monk similar to the Blind Eye Order. The current situation is to deal with the invasion of the Army of Hell, and in the face of a common enemy, subtle doubts can be directly ignored. The leader of Logue said he can take Imric and his team to Logue Camp. They have just finished their daytime patrol and plan to return to Logue Camp to rest. The wilderness at night is much more terrifying than during the day, and the aura of hell will spread outward from the monastery at night, making the monsters more active than during the day. So the group set off together, walking non-stop on the open wilderness. Davian walked up to Imric and asked him, Prince, how do you understand the language of these monkeys? Monkey, as a usually refers to humans. Although as Ojuan's connection with the old world continues to strengthen, when communicating with the outside world, he refers to humans as humans. However, when secretly communicating with his own people, many Azza still habitually refer to humans as monkeys, not to mention the arrogant Kalido people, wishing to treat Ojuan's other Azza as monkeys. The Dragon Prince felt that he needed to correct this bad behavior, just because of the elves' cross behavior at the end of their lives. 80% of the elves with a population of millions died due to civil war, leaving only a few shrimp soldiers and crab generals to support the old world. It is not qualified to say that humans are monkeys, but now he cannot directly order them to change their names, otherwise the difference in their personalities before and after will definitely attract their attention. Davian, in the message my ancestors gave me, the people of this world have bravely fought against demons for thousands of years. Their courage and honor are no different from Azza, which I greatly admire. In the journey ahead, I believe you will also see this. 
After being shut down, Davian could only answer yes and then return to the back of the team. Watching him give a somewhat uneasy answer, Imrik also felt a bit helpless. He had a good view of this young man, who was brave in battle, eager for honor, and had strong strength, but still had the arrogance that Assel generally believed in judging people through his nostrils, especially Davian, who had become the Dragon Prince at a young age. He could only do his best to correct it later on. Imrik is constantly talking to the leader of Logue, trying to extract some information from it, such as whether the Arate Mountains have been invaded. He is not only interested in their forging techniques and world stones, but even the barbarians are very interested. If the barbarians can be brought into Warhammer world, these strong barbarians are all small ogres. But the leader of Logue was unaware of these situations, and her identity level only allowed her to know about the surroundings of Logue's camp. After the Dark Wanderers destroyed the monastery, they released the Queen of Sorrow, Anduril, and guarded the path to Ruguin. Along the way, I kept exchanging information and found that the general situation was similar to what I learned in the game, with basically no changes. However, the difference was that the seven heroes who saved the world did not appear. Now, the Rog camp is struggling to support the continuous attacks of demons. Although there are not two strong monsters in the Blood Wasteland, there are always some unexpected situations when the portal appears. Finally, we arrived at Rog Camp, where tall wooden stakes built the exterior walls. A several meter wide moat separated us from the outside world, and a large stone bridge connected the two places. Compared to a town, it looked more like a military stronghold. Let the other three people first report the situation to the leader of Kasha. Roger took Imrik directly to Akra's residence, which was actually a large tent. An elderly blind nun wearing a nun's uniform was standing at the entrance of the tent, seemingly waiting for someone. Explaining the situation of Imrik and his group to the blind nun, Log turned around and left. Akra is a high dot level nun of the blind monastery, and her strength belongs to the first level in Log's camp, just like Kasha. She doesn't need this log to worry about safety at all. Staring at the blind nun in front of her, time left many marks on her face. Although the black cloth that covered her eyes covered the wrinkles at the corners of her eyes, the wrinkles at the corners of her mouth and cheeks were still clearly visible. The nun's dress with a hood covered most of her body. While Imrik was still observing her, Akra had already spoken directly, and his words surprised Imrik. Welcome, warriors from afar, you will be the hope to save this world. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Cost you are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Cost as someone who has fully accepted the memory of the Dragon Prince, although he was somewhat surprised to hear Akra's words, he did not show it at all. He still maintained a calm expression and instead intended to make a comeback. He quickly spoke up, it seems that you have anticipated our arrival and told me what the reason is. The blind nun did not directly respond to Imrik's question. Instead, she invited him into her tent. Imrik gestured for the other people to stay alert outside and followed Akira into the tent. Most of the tent was filled with books, and there was also a small table. Akira asked Imrik to sit down first and pick up a pot of tea from the side to pour for him. Upon seeing this situation, Imrik didn't rush to continue asking. As an elder, he remained patient when dealing with any questions. Akira also poured himself a cup of tea, took a light sip, and opened his mouth to answer Imrik's question. Blind nuns can see some blurry scenes of the future. I saw before that the seven heroes who saved the world had disappeared, but instead, it was you who led the seven people here. The disappearance of the seven heroes did not surprise Imrik. The arrival of a few of them would definitely change some things. The blind nun had the ability to predict the future, which I knew, and what curious me the most was the word, come from afar. In Asa, there are various meanings of, come from afar, including ancient saints from afar, demons from afar, and enemies from Druzzi from afar. Although Akras, come from afar, does not have any meaning outside the world, this distance can be far or close, and it does not accurately explain the origins of several of his people. 
Seemingly aware of Imrik's question, Akra continued to speak. I don't know your background either, but it's like a demon suddenly appearing in this world. Perhaps you have other goals, but the process is consistent with our goals. Touching his chin, Akra was not wrong about this. His goal was only to acquire skills and items in Diablo 2, and fighting demons was just a side effect. In response, Akra said, perhaps our goals are not the same, but those demons will become obstacles to my actions. We can cooperate with each other. The nun holding a teacup nodded in agreement, I will give you the greatest help as a price for saving this world. After speaking, Akra asked Imrik to come in with the other six people and took out a book placed in a box from the side. He opened it very carefully, containing a golden book and carefully picked it up. Facing seven people, constantly reciting incantations, the energy around him was constantly pouring into this book. Imrik carefully read it, and it should be a skill book only available in the second act. It seemed that Akra was just as he had expected, able to give character skill points. With the continuous influx of energy, the golden book emitted a light and suddenly shattered at its peak. The shattered paper did not fall directly to the ground, but instead turned into clusters of golden energy, approaching the Imrik group. Several people who had reacted to this situation were stopped, and energy emitting a golden glow flooded into their bodies. Imrik felt as if something had been added. Hurriedly flipping through the cowhide book, he found an additional Roman numeral I under the skills in the information bar, which was present in all seven people. This situation surprised Imrik greatly. At first, he had hoped for some skills and items, but he didn't expect to obtain all the skills in Diablo II. He needed to carefully consider what skill to choose. The other few people didn't react much, just felt that after the energy flooded into their bodies, something seemed to have added to their bodies, and then disappeared. The blind nun holding a book may have been exhausted by the ability to give skill points, sitting in a chair panting heavily and appearing very weak. This is the biggest price I can pay you, warrior from afar, are you still satisfied? Looking at Akra, who appeared powerless due to excessive energy output in front of him, Imrik thought of a sentence he had seen before. We respect those who dare to pay the price to change their destiny. They deserve more blessings than those who only pray and hope for others to give. I opened my mouth to answer the blind nun's question, which was very formal this time. I have accepted this contract, and I greatly admire your determination. The dragon prince could already see that Akra's life had turned into a candle in the wind. The strength of the past may have allowed her to hold on for a few more years, but the rest of her life will definitely not be as comfortable as before. A smile barely appeared on his wrinkled old face, and Akra took out a token from his pocket. This is my token. I have arranged accommodation for a few of you. If you need it, please go find Kasha and she will tell you what to do. After taking the token, the few people looked at her somewhat differently. Since those energies entered the bodies of the Manos and others, they could understand what Akra was saying. Although they didn't know what other uses this energy had besides eliminating language barriers, judging from the serious expression on the prince's face, they knew that this nun must have paid a lot, but it was the honor of this old woman to pay for Asur. A few people withdrew from the tent, and there were already people waiting for Imrik outside. They took him to the residence, which was actually a relatively well-repaired house with four bedrooms and one living room. Imrik first let the few people stay in the living room and entered the room alone, intending to check the situation of the cowhide book. With his mind, he clicked on the skill point on his information bar. Soon, the cowhide book followed a vortex and three interfaces appeared, namely the paladin skill panel, all in a white clickable state. There was an I number in the upper right corner, indicating that clicking was possible without the need for pre-existing skills. Directly view the attack and defense aura, without considering combat skills. What Imrik needs is skills that can provide group gain. With the strength of the original owner and mine as Neil, he can definitely rank at the top of the world in Warhammer without lacking combat skills. There are three paladins in your team, and the entire game has four additional skill points, which means you can point to twelve different halos. 
The protective halo includes health, magic, endurance recovery, physical, magic, and curse protection, as well as the ability to use enemy corpses to restore your own state. And the attack aura is to enhance strength, fire, lightning, and ice attacks, rebound damage, increase accuracy, attack power, and attack speed, demon and undead special attacks, and reduce enemy resistance. To be honest, Imric thinks of these skills, and each one has a strong effect. After hesitating for a while, I still clicked on the fanaticism aura. This attack aura can increase the damage, attack power, attack speed, and accuracy of users and allies in various dimensions. Although the amplification effect is not as good as other specialized auras, overall it is the best. After clicking, Imric felt a force in his body constantly emanating towards his surroundings, with some exertion but not much. He picked up the wooden stick in his hand and waved it casually, feeling the strengthening effect. The attack power has not been tested, but the attack speed has increased by about 10%. Imric can feel that his swing speed is faster than before. Although the increase is not very exaggerated, this is an aura skill. As long as it is within the range, the entire army will have an effect. If he continues to invest skill points in the later stage, it should be stronger. Holding the wooden stick in his hand, Imric looked at it in a daze and couldn't help but sigh. This plug.in is really awesome. End of this chapter.